we're blessing God for yet words that he still gives us to speak to us in these times. And a few weeks ago, we shared with you that I thought that what we're experiencing uh, from the book of Second Chronicles, and we talked about the fact that this is a call for humility. It's a call for us to let our humility become stronger, not, less, not necessarily the loss of our faith, but it is the expression of our faith through our humility. And we're going to praise God for a word that he's placed in my heart for us today. So I'm going to ask you, again, we've read from the book of Second Chronicles, chapter 26, verses 16 through 23. I'm going to go through and read once again, but I'm going to read it from a different version, the New Revised Standard Version. And I want you to hear the words of the Lord as we begin to speak what the Lord has placed in my heart to share for us today. While we're doing this, we also want to remember uh, those lives that were taken even down in Atlanta last night and remembering those lives that have been taken out over the period of years and months to know and recognize that God is speaking to us and causing us to understand and comprehend what it is that we should do as a people. Let's hear the word of the Lord. But when he had become strong, he grew proud to his destruction, for he was false to the Lord his God and entered the temple of the Lord to make offering on the altar of incense. But the priest Azariah went in after him, and eighty priests of the Lord were men of valor. They withstood King Uzziah, and they said to him, It is not for you, Uzziah, to make offering to the Lord, but for the priests, the descendants of Aaron, who are consecrated to make offering. Go out of the sanctuary, for you have done wrong, and it will bring you no honor from the Lord God. Then Isaiah was angry. Now he had a censer in his hand to make offering. And when he became angry with the priest, a leprous disease broke on him or broke out on his forehead. In the presence of the priest, in the house of the Lord, by the altar of incense. When the chief priest Azariah and all the priests looked at him, he was leprous in his forehead. They hurried him out, and he himself hurried to get out, because the Lord had struck him. Uzziah was leprous to the day of his death, and being leprous lived in a separate house for he was secluded or excluded from the house of the Lord. His son Jotham was, the char was in charge of the palace of the king, governing the people of the land. Now the rest of the acts of Uzziah. From first to last, the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, wrote, Uzziah slept with his ancestors. They buried him near his ancestors, in the burial field that belonged to the kings, for they said, he is leprous, and his son Jotham succeeded him. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, at this moment that we come together to learn lessons from the experiences of those who have experienced you, we ask you by the power of your grace and might and spirit that God, you would allow your word, your presence to move out and minister to every hearer of this word. Be it live here on the parking lot of the Transformation Church or be it through the video media through which they may be looking now. Grace and peace be with us. Humility and power flow through us. 
Enable us, O oh God, to realize that without you, we can do nothing. And without you, we are nothing. We need you, Lord. We need to hear from you. We need to be blessed by your word. Sanctify our hearing that we may hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. In Jesus' name we pray and ask it. And all the people blowing their horns say amen. Bless God for all of those suffering families, uh, those suffering cities, communities, who find themselves now in a place that they don't know what it is they should believe or who it is that they should trust. We make certain that our prayers continue to be stretched out toward them. These are the words that came to my heart as we reflected this week. Success and prosperity too often desensitizes us to the humble origins from which we were rooted. We come to recognize that success is a good thing, but success that is not tapped down back into the origin from which we came and the source from which our success comes can desensitize us to the very fact that if it were not for the grace and the strength of God, none of us would be able to accomplish or achieve anything. We are dependent upon God's grace. We are dependent upon his power. We need him every day and every hour. Secondly, one must always remember that special graces enable the successes that we achieve. None of us got where we are by ourselves. It is the grace of God. Very often it was the prayers of those parents, those grandparents, those members of our family that while we didn't even realize it, were lifting us up into the presence of the Lord, were causing our souls to be blessed and our pathways to be protected because of their prayers and their trust and their confidence in what God could do. Remember, it is by God's grace that we stand and we, that we are where we are now. Thirdly, none of us gets to the place of achievement by ourselves. Someone helped us. Someone along the way found a way to lift us, to encourage us, to inspire us. And we must never forget who it was that helped us get to where we are. It is by God's grace and mercy and the help of those who are sensitive to the voice of God who at the moment that we needed it the most reached out a caring prayer, a hand, or word of encouragement and enabled us to get to where we are. For the believer, had it not been for the Lord who is on our side, all that is achieved is, ruined, is rooted in the diversity of helps. Somebody helped you. Somebody helped me. Without the help of the Lord and without the help of others, none of us would be where we are today. To many though, the depth we owe, we forget it to those who have enabled our ascent to whatever greatness that we have achieved, whatever accomplishments that we have made. Humility is the thing that sustains us. When we reach where we reach in terms of pinnacle of success, we must never forget how we got there and who helped us to get there. There are many who are experiencing graduations throughout this 2020, very special graduations like none other that we've ever experienced before because we're not able to even share as families with our graduates in the ways that we are accustomed to doing. 
No long, large gatherings, no entering into arenas filled with parents, filled with proud and very thankful parents, aunts, grandparents, great-grandparents, and parents, brothers and sisters, nephews, nieces and cousins, all of them proud, but now we graduate in a different place than we've ever been. But my word to all of us, don't forget how you got there. Don't forget who brought you through. Don't forget the prayers that made certain that even in the darkest time, in the deepest nights, when you wonder if you'd be able to pass that test, that God gave grace, special grace, for you to make it. It is humility that sustains us. Life is composed of experiences from which we learn lessons and these lessons equip us for achieving what we are purposed to do while occupying this earth. Thank God for those who discover what on earth they were meant to be here for. Thank God for those who will not renege on the call of God upon their lives. When God lays his hand upon us, when God puts a special anointing and gift upon you, he does not you give it to you for you to use on yourself and to gloat about it, but to always give thanks and give praise to God for what you have. Last week, and once again, I, I, I quote to you from Pima Chodron, uh, these words, nothing ever goes away until it teaches us what we need to know. We are obviously in a learning moment. We're obviously experiencing week after week, month after month, not just this coronavirus, this COVID-19 experience, but we are seeing the breakout of what is being revealed and exposed in terms of the disparities that exist. Not just in our country, but obviously across the world, there are disparities. There are those things that we should be looking after and caring for. We are exposed to the very inequities that exist between the haves and the have-nots, the rich and the poor and not realizing that we are all a part of the same community. We are members together, uh, for those of us who are Christians in the body of Christ, but we are part of this world structure. And my neighbor is to be loved as much as I love myself. Again, we're living in the moments in which great disparities existing in our country are being exposed. A country, the United States of America, that is seen across the world as a beacon of hope for people of diverse culture, cultures and diverse races. Uh, we see America looked upon as that great place, that place that everyone would want to come to, a place that would offer opportunity. Uh, now we find ourselves as a nation Rather than reaching out to try to help somebody, we find ourselves often blocking those who would want to enter in. God has blessed us, but we have now turned away from the very power that brought us to where we are. The world is shocked when the pictures of injustice continue to flow and cruelty are displayed for all of us to see. When police kill an unarmed black man, George Floyd, by suffocating the very life of him, modern day form of lynching it is, as he pleads, I can't breathe, the whole world protest. Now this protest has reached out and has caused others to recognize the fact that we are brothers of this earth, this planet earth belongs to all of us and it is not just any of ours. I cannot claim this to be just mine. I don't believe that we can stand alone as a nation. Nations should stand together. 
Nations should not isolate themselves or segregate themselves from other nations and other countries. Because we realize and recognize that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and all of them who dwell therein. We are called by God to exercise a common humanity, recognizing that it is God that has created us and we didn't do it ourselves. I sat and I reflected and as I reflected I, I looked at the lives that were taken away even the life last night as we uh, looked and, and saw the windies burning and understanding the pain that still exists in so many. I, I, I reflected on this that the sanctity of life not only applies to unborn infants but also to life aborted from young black men and young black women, often out of a racial disparity that devalues the lives of black and brown human beings. I recognize the fact that I just cannot be so caught up with one side of life. I must recognize that all of life matters to God. Black lives matter. It's something we must tout. We tout it because it has been so dismissed. And we cannot afford to dismiss the value of the life of any life. But especially now in this time. Where we have shown in the United States of America. That we do not respect black lives and brown lives. Like other lives that exist here. This country was not ours. We did not find it. We stole it from the Indians. And those Americans who are here, before we ever got here, we claimed it as our own. But recognize God sees all forms of wickedness and injustice. And he moves in ways to cause us to recognize and realize what we have done. And we will not get over this until we've learned the lesson. Success and power can blur the lines of vulnerabilities that we all have. We all are vulnerable. None of us are perfect. We all have imperfection. And if it were not for the goodness of the Lord and the grace of God, none of us would be what we are or where we are today. But God brought us here. Now, if you know that God has brought you here, let all the cars join in. God brought us here. Understand that success and power should never be mistaken for perfection and unbridled privilege. If we are successful, if we have achieved much, if we find ourselves with great economies, if we find ourselves with great honor, armies, don't boast about what you've got, but give thanks to God for allowing you to get what you have. Because again, it is God who is the one that causes us to obtain wealth. It is in the book of Deuteronomy, the eighth chapter, that the Lord uh, speaks to them and he says, I want to remind you of something. I'm going to give you a land, and the land that I give you is going to be a rich well, a rich land, full of wealth, full of opportunity. But once you get there, don't you forget how you got there. Don't forget who brought you in. Don't forget who made the pathway for you to be able to enter into the blessings that you have. For when you get there, and begin to say it is of my own strength, my own power that I got this. You are destined for failure and you're destined to be brought down. I don't want any of us in here to feel that we deserve anything or got it only because of our own strength. Recognize it is God who has blessed us to be where we are. This is a humbling season. We are to be learning something. 
I remember in the film, The Color Purple, there was a song that was sung, God is trying to tell you something. God is trying to tell you something. Maybe God is trying to tell you something right now. I believe God is trying to tell us something. I believe God is trying to show us something. I believe God is trying to move us to something. I believe God is trying to awaken us to realize that we cannot stand flat-footed and do nothing hidden behind the walls of sanctuaries, not realizing the destruction that's taking place. Your power and give it freely unto them. This is a humbling season. It's in this learning season with the coronavirus pandemic and the outbreak of the global protests that are subsequent to the murder of George Floyd again, we should humbly be seeking what the Spirit is trying to reveal and say to us. Pride must be checked. This is not a time to divert the glory that belongs to God to ourselves. What I look for to see if there is any humility lesson being learned is how we present the success of our country and of our world. When the economy is growing, I just can't pound my chest and say, I did this. If it weren't for God's grace, this economy would go down to nothing and all of us would be impoverished. But God's grace has kept us. God's grace has brought us to where we are today. No one should be seeking to lay claim on the glory that belongs to God. Pride will destroy us. Glory doesn't belong to political parties. Glory doesn't belong to political leaders. Glory doesn't belong to pastors. Glory doesn't belong to spiritual leaders. Glory doesn't belong to those who look at themselves as so high and mighty and sanctified and holy. Glory does not belong just to those. Glory belongs to God. For it is God that causes me to be who I am. And I go back and summarize again to the text. I read once again. But the priest Azariah went in after him with 80 priests of the Lord who were men of valor. They withstood Uzziah and said to him, it is not for you, Uzziah, to make an offering to the Lord, but for the priest, the descendants of Aaron, who consecrated, who are consecrated to make offering. Go out of the sanctuary, for you have done wrong, and it will bring you no honor from the Lord God. Then Uzziah was angry now he had a censer in his hand to make offering and when he became angry with the priest a leprous disease broke out on his forehead and in the presence of the priest and in the house of the Lord by the altar of incense I close today because of the irony that I saw in these few words. One, this is the tragedy that Uzziah, a great king who was enthroned at the age of 16 and ruled for 50 some odd years with great success, enabled by the Lord, finds himself now full of pride. 
And when he finds himself full of pride, the pride destroys him because he fails to be humbled and to realize that he, if it were not for God's grace, could accomplish nothing. Look at the last few verses as we go through this text. And failing to humble himself in the presence of the priest, in the house of the Lord, while standing at the altar of incense, which is the very symbol of the prayer offering of all the people to God in humility. Arrogance will destroy us, but humility will position us for mercy. I want us all to know, arrogance will kill us, but it is humility that's going to bring life back to us. It is going to cause God to come down from heaven and whatever the need is, if my people call by my name, humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven. I will heal the land. Not your party, not your candidate, not the one decrying and declaring their self-righteousness, but I will come down. When we repent and when we humble themselves, God will make a way out of no way. Give God praise in this house. Give God the praise on this parking lot. For God is great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Now these are humbling moments in the presence of the priest in the house of the Lord and standing next to the symbol of the offering of praise of prayers to God by the community. We cannot at this moment stand arrogant declaring who we are, declaring our righteousness. But we need to stand declaring his righteousness alone. For it is of the righteousness of God, it is by the grace of God that we are saved. And it is this day that we pray, God help us, God save us, God redeem us, God restore us. We have sinned. We've allowed ourselves to become so highly lifted and proud that we forget those, those who are citizens of our communities, who have every right to the grace and the mercies and the blessings of God as every last one of us. And so God, we give you thanks. We give you praise right now, God. Right now, God, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. Shout, keep our hands to the glory of God. For God alone is worthy to be straight. Mighty is our God, strong to deliver. Jesus is mighty to save. This is the day that the Lord hath made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Give him praise, all ye people. Now, this is a different time. Normally, we've been making an altar call, having you come to the altar, hearts that are broken, convicted, to be drawn nearer to the presence of God, but in your car right now, or listening or viewing, 
by whatever means you are viewing this message today. I pray that you allow God to speak to your heart and tell you what to do. I pray that he gives you the power, the humility, the grace, the compassion to look around you and see all of the things that are not right. See all the injustice, all the unkindness, all the bigotry, all the prejudice that exists in layers that are now being unearthed. God, we're called into action. We're called to pray, but we're also called to penetrate our community with the grace of knowing what it means to be blessed by God. I am not proud because of my own self-accomplishment. I am not proud on the basis of what I have done. I am grateful because God has used this vessel as a vehicle to express his word. None of us should hold your head up above anybody. You should look down and say, it is because of God's grace that I am what I am. If I had a hose and someone needed to be baptized, I would take a hose and I would wet you down in the name of the Lord. If we were down in the country, we'd take you down by the creek and step into the waters and be baptized. Understand, it is by faith that we believe. At the moment that I and we believe, at the same moment, God turns life around. I'm praying for every protester that there'll be those amongst the protesters who can release the grace of the mercies and compassion that God has given and showed them. We're here because God made a way. And I pray that when you go back, you go back with a determination that Lord, use me as an instrument for your peace. Use me as a vehicle of expression of what needs to happen in our world, in our country. Let me not align myself just because of reasonable choice. Let me align myself trusting that whatever needs to be done, God will do it. Put your sensor down and let God do what he alone can do. Praise the name of the Lord. Give God praise one more time. I shout out to those also, and I don't want to miss this out, uh, in Liberia, to our churches there in Liberia, uh, to overseer Samuel Nugba. Don't give up the hope. God is still working with you too, and all of our saints in Liberia. We will only enter the walls of the sanctuary when all of our protocols are is sufficient for us to believe we can do it as safely as possible. There are a lot of things that need to be done and we're working on that. And once we get that worked on, we'll go inside. But until then, let's enjoy worshiping God under the open skies. God bless you.